Well, League of Tomorrow is back. <laughs> Bringing you fantasy football advice today to help you win your leagues tomorrow. We have some redraft tips because it is clutch part of the season. We're going to discuss some dynasty trades you can make. After losing, like I said, I have to do the Bean Boozled. Like, comment, and subscribe. So I lost this week. Congratulations. Don't bet on Justin Fields passing yards, even if it's against Detroit. He'll just run the hell out of the ball. So, Seb, as the winner, spin that wheel and see what my 50-50 chance lands on. All right, you get a delicious cappuccino. What? That's this has three of them, huh? Cappuccino, liver, and onions. It's liver and onions. No, there's cappuccino. What's the cappuccino liver and for? onions, dude. It's a 50-50 shot. The, I, I either there's two beans that look the same. I'm wondering why there's three words. Because it's liver and onions. No, oh, don't. I thought there were the one was yummy, the other one wasn't. These are my two beans, and it's time to not flick but eat one. Uh, <laughs> so, which one do you think I should go for? <laughs> Suckers. <coughs> Dude, can't be that bad. Both of those are real food. The taste is so on point in a jelly bean. This is a candy you think would taste good. It really tastes like liver and onions. And it's so much more gross that's in a sugary food. Oh. Uh, God, what was the next one? Let's find out. Uh, we're going to go for a birthday cake or dirty dishes. If there's a God out there, don't yeah. give me dirty dishes. Which one you think? I'm going to take your choice this time. You know, yeah. Mm. 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 Wow, that is definitely not birthday cake. I want you guys to know that his breath worse smells worse than anything that these taste like. Oh. I, think, I don't think, I think you're kind of being a baby. Oh my God. You ever smell dishwash? You ever smell dishwash? Like dishes when you're like soaking them and all that nasty shit comes up? Right there. That's the taste. We got juicy pear or booger. Please give me juicy pear. I don't know, pears are kind of gross, I'm not ready. Either. I'm not going to trust your advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a lot less quantity. So I'm choosing this guy. Should have me choose. <laughs> oh, for... <laughs> three, three. three for three? I feel like as a six-year-old, I'd be liking this. <laughs> this is a dream meal right here, but no. No. I don't know, I ate a few bookers as a kid and I did not enjoy it. That dad. was terrible. A lot worse than I thought. That I thought I got lucky with the bean boozled. I did, I did not. I almost... That's terrible. And now it's time for... Wheel of Miss This is where we spin the wheel. We have an over-under challenge where we find an over-under we disagree on. And we... Bet on it. Whoever loses has to eat a gross food. We have tarantulas, the one chip challenge. We have some very hardcore gross foods. Like jelly so, beans. So, since you won last week, give this thing a good spin. Uh, all right. So, it landed on a shot of dog food. And what will happen is we are going to take not only some dry dog food, but some wet dog food. We're going to grind it up with some water and we're going to have a shot glass. And whoever loses is going to have to drink that shot next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's get right into the over-unders and what we disagree on and why. So we're going to bet on the Monday night games. To start this, we each have Ayuk. 63 and a half reception yards. We have the under on that. Now, he has been a breakout the past oh, couple Oh, I'm sorry. I'm weeks. going over on that. 
I thought you were going to do that, so I'm going to do I'm going to do the over on this one. So, all right, that is our disagreements. We are doing the IU. I feel really strongly about this, just with Christian McCaffrey going into town. Yes, Cardinals defense is not the best; they're not great against tight ends. Start your tight ends against them. Absolutely. But Ayuk has just been surging out of nowhere. I do see Debo getting more usage. I see McCaffrey getting the usage. Yes, he can hit that. I am pretty positive that he will take the under on that. Yeah, so anyways, we're going to move on to Debo. 53, 52.5 receiving yards. I'm going to be taking the over as well on this. I will be taking the over. I so, mean, this one we're in agreement. Debo, yes, he doesn't get the volume of work technically in the passing game, but he can break one very easily. He is still a superstar wide receiver. Yes, he hasn't been utilized as much as we'd like this season in the rushing and passing game. He only had two receptions last week. But against this defense, I do think he can get it done. I think they will target him more while Ayuk is going to demand a little more coverage because of what he's been doing lately. Yep, and I mean, I couldn't agree more. And the next one is going to be Jimmy G spot for 253 passing yards. You know, this isn't one I would bet on. If, if I am doing my over-unders, I'm not betting on the over-under just because of the defense that Arizona Cardinals had. Yes, 253 yards seems like a lot for Jimmy G, but it is a bad defense. I would take the under. I'm not telling anyone to go bet on this particular one to take the under, but I do think that he will hit the under more than likely, but there is easily a chance he does not. I think they can rely on that rushing game for the reason that i took brandon Ayuk over and debo over i think that jimmy garoppolo is going to be having a lot of passing yards if those two are both overs that's 110 passing yards as is then you got george Kittle, who's a must start must play he's going to be just torching that uh, defense that just allows every tight end to get what 50 60 yards a game and then as well as christian mccaffrey who's just going to be padding stats on the dump offs like crazy and have a lot of other capable weapons there. So that's why I'm going to be taking the over. And I'm hoping it's a more competitive game back and forth. And that makes me think that they'll be passing more than they'll be running. Stay tuned next week to see who loses and has to eat the shot of dog food. Or gets to, depending on your opinion. We are going to review a comment from Aaron Gates. He's one of my favorite listeners. He really has some good trades he's done to help him win his league and get his team where he's at. He was six and three before this week. Now, this was before Jonathan Taylor had his blow up game. This was last week. Just coincidentally traded for Jonathan Taylor and used one of the top tier QBs to get him. Kind of a big trade with lots of players involved, but I traded away Najee Harris, Jalen Hurts, George Kittle, and Chris Godwin. And he received Jonathan Taylor, Tua, and Mark Andrews and Garrett Wilson. He says, I play in a 12 team, one QB, two running back, three wide receiver and tight end, and one flex. Currently six and three, somehow managed to have Eckler, JT, Devontae Adams, and Mark Andrews all in the same redraft team in a 12 man league. The upside seems unreal to me. Let's break this trade down. So you have Jonathan Taylor over Najee. You got that running back V running back. Like we said, Jonathan Taylor's a top five back rest of the season people called us crazy last week before oakland's game now people are getting on the bus jonathan taylor is just such a huge upgrade from Najee harris this maybe mid rb2 running back yes he has a good schedule but great upgrade now then you go to mark andrews to george kittle you upgrade that big of a tier yes george kittle is a good tight end but he's nowhere near what mark andrews can do he is not going to put up those kelsey mark andrews numbers not with christian mccaffrey in town so that's a huge upgrade as well yes he downgraded from jalen hurts but he got a qb like Tua tonga by but that is not a huge downgrade because Tua can still have these boom weeks with waddle and hill He can easily have a four to six touchdown week like he's already done multiple times this season. You go to the next guy, which is the biggest downgrade he got. He downgraded from Chris Godwin to Garrett Wilson. Now that is a projected about two to three point difference per game rest of the season. But with wide receivers, there's no way to say that it is a huge downgrade because Wide receivers are so volatile that they can have a big week. They can, the rest of the season, Garrett Wilson as a rookie is expected to do a lot better. This is when rookies start doing better. This is when we saw Amon Ra have his true breakout. So it 
can actually go even in the direction of Garrett Wilson. So that that gap isn't as large as the gaps he filled by filling those big old holes. So now we jump into our next segment, which is going to be our redraft buy or sell target. We okay, so I'm going to be talking about a player who I was I talked about a couple weeks ago, someone you should trade for. He's still very tradable for because his points he has not been producing as well as he's expected. This time last year, you couldn't trade for him. He's a guy who's been dealing with some cracked ribs. Uh, and that's going to be Me? Justin Herbert. Uh, he's going to be having Mike Williams and Keenan Allen coming back for the playoffs, most likely. And when they come back, he's, they still have the easiest schedule. Honestly, if you, if you get him on your team, it's, it's going to help you win a Super Bowl if you're lacking in that position. But you shouldn't be worth too much at this point. I really like the decision there. Uh, Justin Herbert is just an elite QB. He has shown things through his first three years that no, almost no QB ever besides, you know, Patrick Mahomes has shown. He's just an incredible QB who has no weapons. We see uh, QBs change when they have no weapons. Tua, without Tyreek and uh, Jalen Waddle, was nothing. Um, and they can really upside. Now, I really like this because what does it take to get Justin Herbert right now? Not a lot. Uh, you can go through almost bench guys because in these bye weeks, people need a starter, right? Yeah, like a quarterback and a bench or two player uh, kind of deal. Uh, yeah, something like that would be perfect, but it's just no one's leaning on Herbert right now. But with all these bye weeks, especially if you have a winning record and you don't have a top echelon QB that think, you know, that can give you that upper echelon ceiling. If you don't have that right now, that sucks, but you can get this for so cheap and no one's going to make you pay for it. This is just a really good buy low opportunity there. So, I mean. And he should have a relatively safe floor with the defense he's going to be playing up against. I mean, uh, Kadarius Tony, I, in these bye weeks right now, I bet you with the hype going on with him in Kansas City, you have Miko Hardman on the IR. I think you could easily flip Kadarius Tony for Justin Herbert. This is just a great Simply buy worth low. a shot. It's, it's worth a shot, to say the least. If you have any questions on someone you would like on that tier to trade, you know, to trade away and get Justin Herbert, go down in the comments below and we'll message you and tell you if that is a good deal or not. Go to my buy low. That is Mark Andrews. Now, after being injured, the people are desperate. We don't know if he's going to play tomorrow. I, From what I was hearing today, the last report, he practiced in full Friday. He is going to play Sunday. So this has a caveat. We are recording this Saturday. This won't be out till Monday. So if he doesn't have a touchdown and has like a four for 50 yard performance, I really think. I really think he actually got a touchdown on Sunday. In fact, I'm calling it right here. I hope not. Because if not. Ju uh, he's such an easy buy candidate for me. You have, he's still a top three tight end on the year while missing all these games. I mean, that is him and Kelsey are just in this tier of their own where Kelsey's untradeable right now, especially with Miko Hardman going out. You're not going to get a guy like this out of nowhere. This is the only opportunity you will have this season to go buy Mark Andrews while you can. And if you think you want to buy Mark Andrews and don't know if the price is right, Comment down below and we will let you know. All right, now for our final segment, my favorite segment, Dynasty, because this is what I live and die for. Take my advice, comment down below, and I will help you through any Dynasty trade. We're working on a Patreon as well to really dive in deeper to your leagues. But I promise you, no matter how bad it is, I can give you the right tips. Or we're gonna talk about the top wide receivers that are aging out. You're talking about Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs, or Cooper Cup who is injured. My advice to you, if you are a competing team this year, but still have assets. So you wanna compete this year, but you don't want to ruin your team for the future. So you see Stefan Diggs on many shows, they'll tell you he's worth a 23 first, you know, mid 23 first. And on top of that, if you're really competing, they'll say, yeah, if I have to throw in a 24 first, as well as that, and none of my other teammates are biting on just one first, that guy's not biting. Yeah, go do it. Well, I have something better for you. Go out and trade Stefan Diggs and trade him for Devonte Adams and a first round pick. Yes. 
try to aim for that 23 first. Maybe you have to throw in a 23 second. Go try to do that because you're losing. This is a six month age gap, okay? Between Adams and Diggs. It really isn't that high. And you can see Adams produce weekly at a close volume. You're losing maybe two to three fantasy points a week at most doing this trade. And as well as you're picking up an extra first round pick. Once you acquire Devonte Adams and that first round pick, you have set yourself up. You can go and take that pick and have a very young prospect who could break out, or you can trade it for younger running back wide receiver. That pick is a liquid asset. It's not going to lose its value no matter what. I don't care if it's a late first, don't care if it's a mid first as long as it's in that top 10 to 12 range go ahead and do this trade because you'll have that liquid asset to do more on you can go pick up another guy with that asset so after you trade digs and you get Adams in a first and you're not competing you're like well I lost six months I'm not competing this year I might be able to next year here's how you compete next year go out and trade Devonte Adams again Go to that Cooper Cup owner because every Cooper Cup owner out there in a dynasty league is 95% of the time competing or they already sold him. So they have this giant hole in their roster and you have all the leverage to go out and get Cooper Cup and a first round pick on top of Adams. Next season, have a guy the same age as Adams. You have a guy six months older than Stefan Diggs. Yet, by the end of these trades, you have two first round extra first round picks. This is a savvy move you need to make. Who has that luxury when you're competing? You're going all out. This is this is a very competitive trade you can make to either team and actually get it done when they're competing. Yet you're building yourself for the future. Go out and try to make an offer like this. If you have a similar idea like this, go ahead in the comments and comment down below exactly how you should take this. Like, comment, and subscribe.